Welcome back to KMR. We're going to talk some rotary. We've got a 13B right here that definitely is going to brap. I wanted to do a little bit of a technical talk about what we have going on here, um, what this engine was built for, and uh, what parts we ended up using in this build. So we're going to jump right into the discussion and some specs. So if you follow the channel, uh, I was working on a GT style bridge port based off of Cosmo side housings, side plates. And uh, this is the end result. We were able to make a modern four port GT style bridge port um, throughout Mazda racing, rotary racing. Uh, bridge ports have been used in a lot of the GT classes, IMSA classes, Le Mans racing, kind of uh, an, an in-between. The street port and the peripheral port, uh, the bridge port can flow a lot of air, has a fairly peaky horsepower. It's an aggressive port, so if you're talking about the similarity of what cam timing would be, this would be a very aggressive uh, intake port opening, so very early opening um, in reflection to the same style of what a cam would be doing. Early opening and fairly long duration uh, when it gets down to it. And then same thing on the exhaust ports. It's not a small port. It's not massive, uh, but same thing. The idea is to get that extra volume of air out, uh, but not be uh, closing too late and uh, not be opening too early. So in the end, this port opens a little earlier uh, than it does close late on the exhaust side. Trying to minimize overlap, um, but also take advantage of what the overlap can do and scavenge can do in a naturally aspirated configuration. And although in a lot of engine builds, we talk about trying to keep uh, overlap or scavenge to a minimum, um, and we often talk about not wanting to cut the water seals or go too big on the bridge port. Uh, and when you're applying boost or turbocharging bridge ports or semi-peripheral ports, you have to be careful of not having too much back pressure. And, uh, and it's not ideal to cut the water seal. And uh, there's a lot of things that can become of concern. But when you're going into the traditional uh, road racing uh, giant bridge, J bridge, uh, GT style bridge, then a lot of those concerns go away. And with a very open exhaust, a uh, very open intake, you're able to actually, um, have advantages to those duration and intake overlap areas where you do get some scavenge and that can actually help with flow, help with horsepower. Rotaries don't mind it in the naturally aspirated application. Um, the modern Renesis did away with almost all of that, and a lot of that has to do with emissions. I'm not saying racing shouldn't care about emissions, but in the traditional sense of Mazda rotary road racing, uh, that was not the concern. Making horsepower was the concern, and that was done with this aggressive style intake porting. So jump ahead, uh, we don't have the same type of parts availability. Uh, getting a hold of brand new uh, rotor housings or brand new 12A or 13B four port side plates can sometimes be difficult. And in a lot of cases, they're simply not available anymore. So one of the goals that, uh, both myself at KMR and, uh, Mazda Trick share is always trying to find ways to use what's currently available, um, to fill the void or even better, uh, what has been traditionally used. So in this case, where we had the opportunity to kind of reevaluate or look at what a traditional GT bridge port was, uh, we opted to modernize it by going with the Cosmo uh, side plates, side housings, and Turbo 2 uh, rotor housings for a couple reasons. Um, Performance-wise, the modern castings are a great casting. They're strong. The port shape is already larger, so we've got more volume on the intake, like I talked about in some of the previous videos. And what's interesting is the casting that's behind that uh, intake volume also allows for aggressive porting. So whether it's 
opening up the uh, duration and volume street porting or uh, bridge porting, you've got a lot of material to work with, and the runner characteristics are fairly good. Um, this type of port design will flow more volume than the traditional four port, um, but has better port shape uh, than the later model six port designs, which do flow more air, but don't have inherently a good runner shape or good runner dynamic. And then also the Cosmo has a taller center plate uh, runner than the FD3S. So when it comes to availability and possible flow, the Cosmo motor ended up looking like a little bit better option. And even though this wasn't a motor that was available in the US, the Cosmo plates are still available in 13B form. And a lot of the times we'll use these uh, either in uh, performance builds because of their characteristics, their strength, their availability, their price, and the intake shape. Um, or uh, if it's just an FD, you can always uh, go with the FD. Or if you want that FD runner for some reason, you can always go slightly smaller with the FD. But even though it's not a motor that's really seen in the U.S., there's a lot of characteristics about those Cosmo plates, Cosmo ports, that lend it to uh, being a good option for road racing, GT racing, boosting, hot rodding, always trying to find the perfect combination of parts that are available and uh, delivering the best performance uh, that we can possibly dream up. So this motor also has some quality internals. It's going to be seeing high RPM duty. Uh, red line will be set at about 10,000 RPM. And with road racing, there's going to be a lot of time spent there as the races are often 15 to 30 minutes. And that means a lot of shifting, a lot of RPM climb, and a lot of heat cycle. The internal rotating assembly is based off the Racing Beat Super Lightweight 1989 to 91, so Series 5 rotors. And uh, those super lightweight rotors are really hard to get at this point, um, but they were basically the lightest available for a long time. And they've also got a snap ringed gear in there as well. Um, Racing Beat did quite a few modifications to their super lightweight rotors to ensure longevity, performance, and reliability. Um, so having a set of those for this motor already put this motor into a high-end category and then surrounding that rotor with quality parts we've got one piece ceramic apex seals uh ionetti seals so those would be the mazda speed seals that were used in the le mans cars or at least the now what's available version of that and they are the two millimeter uh one piece seal and then uh surrounding the rest of the rotor we've got oem corner seals OEM side seals, OEM springs, um, basically all new parts. The rotors also have the Mazda factory race rotor bearing. So it's a deeper groove rotor bearing that holds more capacity of oil. So when you're dealing with high RPM, um, you know, just long duration of sustained RPM, doing everything you can to the oil system, the rotating assembly to ensure Quality performance and reliability is really important. So narrowing the rotors, side cutting for high RPM, the bearings, upping the oil pressure. It's got a race regulator. Um, and we did some porting to the front plate where the oil pump sits to ensure the best oil flow possible. And even on this back inlet for the uh, main feed for oil, oil into the motor down the block, it's also been just lightly ported and polished, uh, again, just port matching, cleaning everything up to optimize oil flow and performance. Uh, we did end up pulling some of the water plugs. Um, this is something we like to do on the race motors. We'll pull out this rear heater outlet and then tap it. And in this case, we didn't need to spot face it because the Cosmo is already flat, but a lot of the times we'll mill that flat. So we've got a nice threaded port that can be plugged, or if it's ever needed to be used, it could be reused. And then same thing, this uh, upper water outlet that would go to the throttle body, 
um, is also plugged. It really just cleans the block up. It's not needed for racing. And if it is needed, you could always bring them back. I don't like to weld them, permanently plug them. I like to give the motor something that could be used later on. Also, nice courtesy of Mazda Tricks. We've got some really nice oil metering pump hole plugs. And uh, we're plugging the injector ports. And we did uh, polish these uh, Racing Beat plugs flush to the runners as well. Um, ensuring good flow, but this is just a racing beat part because this is actually a carbureted motor. I know we're going very old school with this. Um, I'd love to see this motor fuel injected, but the car it's going in is an older wide body uh, race car and it is a carbureted car, so it's going to stay carbureted and when it gets dynoed, we'll probably get those numbers as well. On the front cover, it is a first-gen front cover because you can swap cut front covers throughout most rotary engine combinations. And uh, this is going into an early wide-body car, so that's perfect mounting for it, nice and easy. And then also a uh, Mazda Speed single sheath front pulley, uh, which is uh, a little bit better, has some nice timing marks. So you've got quality timing marks and a, a good ratio of RPM drive for your water pump. A lot of the times that would be accompanied by the underdriven water pump pulley from Mazda Speed as well, but I'm, I'm not sure what the customer is running on that configuration, but uh, a lot of the times they're trying to slow the water pump down so it doesn't cavitate at high RPM, which can be a concern. On the front plate, uh, we're just adding some plugs here because this would be normally your oil feed, so... Um, this could be used as a, uh, a gauge port or anything else if was needed. And uh, we did remove the Cosmo oil filler neck because the customer is going to clock it in a different direction for his oil fill port. So very unique build. Um, a lot of quality parts on the front and rear main bearings. They're actually FD3S stationary gears. And then we pulled those multi-window bearings out and opted into the three-window racing beat uh, main bearings, which just offer, again, a little bit more oil flow. Everything about this motor is designed for high airflow and high oil flow and high oil volume because we want to be able to make power and we want this motor to last. We want the bearings to be happy. Um, and we want the rotors to stay happy. So again, that lightweight and balanced rotating assembly that's also been side cut. So I think I covered the majority of what this motor has going on. If anybody's got questions, let me know. This is actually a new port configuration that we came up with here at the shop, combination of KMR and Mazda Tricks overlaying some of our own templates with other available templates. Um, I really look forward to seeing what this motor does, and if you think we should bring this template uh, out to availability, we definitely can, because it's not something that uh, is available. And, uh, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, it's got the brap. And I think that's a brap. I'm tired. It's been uh, a long couple days making this uh, beautiful engine come to life. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the KMR store, KMR website. Uh, we've got parts, we've got templates, we've got some new swag, and there's more stuff coming. Thank you for watching, and that is a, you know what I'm going to say, that's a brap. I'm a brap. I'm a brap on out of here. i got to get some stickers made that say brap. There's way too much brap in this motor. I cannot wait to hear it brap. That's a wrap.